Welcome traders to this special Ticknell presentation with me Patrick Munley. Today we're going to discuss the not so sterling response of the Great British Pound to the release of the new UK's mini budget released last Friday. But before we jump into today's presentation, as always want to adhere to the risk disclaimer and most importantly, with respect to today's presentation, the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine, they're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. So, the new Chancellor, Kwesi Kartan, has announced his growth plan for 2022 and said that it will turn the vicious cycle of stagnation into a virtuous cycle of growth. In fact, it is an enormous gamble that is unlikely to produce the step increase in the actual and potential growth rates of the economy that he and the new Prime Minister Liz Truss have placed at the centre of their new economic agenda. It's a radical move, but its success is far from guaranteed. What is highly likely, at least in the short term, is that it will push up yields on government debt and weaken sterling, with markets already having sold off the Bank of England have had to make an emergency move, but more about that later in today's discussion. So, with respect to the budgets, what was the big surprise? Well, the costing of the two-year energy price guarantee for households and the six-month energy bill relief scheme for businesses is far higher than the kind of numbers that have been discussed in markets, which were in the range of 100 to 150 billion for the two years. In total, Cartang said it would cost 60 billion for the first six months, so pro rata we can look at 240 billion uh, for two years. That is actually equating to 10% of the UK GDP. Also, 45% top rate of income tax has been scrapped entirely. This was a complete surprise to markets. It doesn't cost a lot of money, really, two billion uh, per annum there or thereabouts, but it sends a very provocative political signal that Truss is not embarrassed to take measures that she feels unlock our entrepreneurial spirits in the UK. She said on the hustings for the Conservative Party leadership election that tax cuts don't need to favour redistribution. And this really shouts that from the rooftops. So what are the specific aims of this budget? Well, it uh, it's really boils down to two key factors. That emergency energy price freeze to prevent a collapse in the finances of the poorer households in the face of the unprecedented surge in energy and food costs. This is colossally expensive, but welcome and necessary. As many have already commented in detail, in particular, the Resolution Foundation that this will be highly effective, but is poorly targeted and does not concentrate the support on the households that really need it the most. Uh, measures intended to boost the trend rate of economic growth to 2.5%. Here, the government is treading on very thin ice. It has published a table of the sensitivity of tax revenues to real GDP growth. The text emphasised that the numbers are purely illustrative but are revealing nevertheless. If the real growth rates were raised by one percentage point each year for the five years, then tax revenues would rise by 47 billion pounds, just under 10 billion per annum. Compare that to the Treasury's own estimate of the cost of policy announcements, which is 44.8 billion per annum by 2026, 2027 fiscal year, i.e. five times the boost to revenue from faster growth. Successive governments have many years have tried but singly failed to boost the medium term growth rate of the economy. Just cutting tax rates and creating some investment zones does not really get to the heart of the problem in the current tax environment. Tax cuts can be important when rates are penal. Think back to the 1970s when the top rate of income tax was 83% and the marginal rate on unearned income was actually 98%. Thatcher cut the top raise to 60% in 1980 and then to 40% in 1989. Now, that's a step change that could be expected to alter behaviour. But at the heart of any attempt to boost uh, growth should be productivity. However, it is notoriously hard to influence 
tinkering with tax rates is unlikely to succeed. Trust is right to have emphasized the need to increase investments as a key driver. Uh, this depends on more than tax rates though. Companies need stability and certainty in terms of the general macroeconomic environment. And that hasn't really been helped by Brexit. And the policy framework, if they are going to commit resources, needs to have an expectation of higher demand, which we're not really seeing in the UK at the moment. The problem is that Kwarteng's approach costs a lot of money, but does not spend it wisely. The bang for the buck is, unlike, is likely to be small at this rate. In terms of the cost, the growth plan document provides a, uh, a scorecard which spells out the cost over the planning period of each policy measure. However, it does not include the cost of the energy price freeze. Fair enough, it's an unknowable at this stage, but it is what the markets are really focusing on. The scorecard projects that the costs of its other policy decisions spelt out in the growth plan start at 19.2 billion in the current fiscal year, rising to 44.8 billion by fiscal year 26-27. The cumulative cost is 161 billion over five years. Kwatang said that the cost of the energy price measures were expected to be 60 billion over just six months. If market energy prices stay at current levels for the next two years, then the freeze will cost an eye-watering 240 billion. The current level of UK general government gross debt is 2,044 2, billion, 100% of GDP. So, what are the consequences for markets? Well, as you can see on the screen at the moment, the initial response to uh, this package was uh, pretty negative across the board. We saw gilt selling off, sterling uh, printing all time lows when uh, the markets opened for Asian trading on Sunday evening, and we have seen a very negative response from UK equities. There is potentially open-ended commitment to hold down energy prices for households and companies, added to which tax cuts announced reduce the ability to finance this. The growth plan for 2022 presents merely a doctrinal hope that the cuts will boost growth sufficiently to make spending measures affordable rather than being a convincing means of financing them. In the meantime, the budget is set to soar with the uh, fiscal watchdog, the Office for Budget Responsibility. They've been tasked to produce an updated set of forecasts by the end of the year, and the Treasury will update its fiscal rules at that time. As things stand at present, the current rules have little credibility and will inevitably be loosened. The OBR's most recent forecast made in March projected the deficit to fall from 5.4% of GDP in 2021-22 to 1.1% by fiscal year 26-27. Uh, we will be doing well if we can uh, be held at that print of 6% for last year. The DMO has increased its guilt and T-bill issuance plans now for 72 billion for the remainder of this fiscal year. One thing missing is any mention of windfall tax on energy company profits. The Labour Party has been pressing for this, but Truss has repeatedly rejected the, those demands. Uh, she's already performed a screen U-turn uh, on her initial position vis-a-vis -vis a support package. Let's see how the public finances evolve and how the markets continue to react, but I wouldn't rule out a, a U-turn on this as well. So, enter the fray, the Bank of England uh, yesterday, making a, uh, an inter-meeting announcement. The BOE announced that it will carry out temporary purchases of long-dated UK government bonds from yesterday in order to restore uh, orderly market conditions. They're expected to complete this uh, process by the 14th of October. The BOE stated that it stands ready to purchase bonds on whatever scale is necessary and confirmed that the operation is fully indemnified by Her Majesty's Treasury. In response, the MPC agreed to delay the start of active guilt sales until the 31st of October, originally scheduled to begin on the 6th of October. However, the MPC's annual target of £80 billion reduction in the stock of guilt is unaffected by the decision. The MPC will not hesitate to change interest rates as much as needed to return inflation to 2%. So what are the main points? Well, the BOE will carry out temporary purchases of long-dated UK government bonds as of yesterday 
until the 14th of October. Again, looking to restore orderly market conditions. The DOE stated that it stands ready to purchase bonds on whatever scale necessary and confirm the operation, like I say, fully indemnified by Her Majesty's government. Uh, the messaging uh, is really consistent with the message from Govern, uh, Governor Bailey's statement uh, released on Monday and Chief Economist Pill's speech, uh, which he came out with on Tuesday, whereby the NPC confirmed that they intend to make a full assessment at the November meeting, but will not hesitate to change inter interest rates as much as needed to return that inflation level back to 2%. So this highlights the potential again for further inter-meeting announcements and the markets are on watch for that. So what was the market response? Well, we saw a uh, pop in gilt, so yields coming off slightly, but in terms of the trend, we can see it's firmly to the downside at the moment, and that, re uh, that reversal we saw yesterday hardly qualifies as a full reversal of this uh, downtrend. Similarly with sterling, saw a little pop, but we're seeing pressure again this morning as markets continue to seek really uh, to test the MPC, I think, and and also uh, to test uh, Prime Minister Trust policy. And I think we are, whilst we're trading below 110 in sterling, focus really has to be on that parity level uh, to the downside. Also, UK equities remain under pressure. So it's going to be an interesting period for sterling over uh, the coming weeks as we see how much markets are prepared to press against this uh, what is widely uh, characterized as a, uh, a folly in terms of uh, government positioning and the government stance with respect to the mini budget. And that concludes the uh, presentation today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the box below. Alternatively, feel free to drop me an email, patrick.munley at tickmillpartners.com, and I'll come back to you uh, with any queries you may have. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.